Hey you, what is up ladies and gentlemen? It is Cody Carpenter here from the YouTube channel Cody Knows and in this video I'm going to show you how it is possible to make a thousand plus per day using Bing ads with affiliate or CPA marketing. So first off I want to address, um, I didn't just start running Bing ads traffic like yesterday and started to see all these results. No, it took a lot of time, a lot of practice, um, a lot of mistakes to get to where I'm at now with uh, Bing ads. And uh, a little side note, it's now Microsoft advertising, but I still like to say Bing ads, it's a lot easier. So anyways, let's just get into the data. I'm in my volume account. I'm gonna have the campaign names blurred out, obviously, because I'm still running them. Yesterday was a big day, um, 1,487 and 50 cents, and I spent 720, no, 750 to get that. So that's about a 100% ROI. And then the day before that was like 1,200, and that was on 700 ad spend as well. So I don't know what the ROI there is, it's like, maybe 80%. So anyways, those two days were really good. And those were both, uh, these numbers are both with just Bing ads traffic. Uh, there's one conversion for audience ads. That's a new feature on Bing ads that I've been uh, testing out. It's basically like a native ad format instead of a uh, search. So I've been testing that out and it's so far, it seems like it's got a lot of potential. Um, I'm still learning about it. I think I might shoot a video on that later on in the week, um, how to set up a audience ads campaign, but it's on my long list to do. Um, so just to show you guys, I'm gonna go over here to traffic sources for yesterday. And you'll see right here that Bing ads was the traffic source responsible for 1451. And let me just go over here. The day before that, Bing Ads was responsible for the 1236 in revenue. So there's the proof that it's all from Bing Ads because I'm also running Facebook Ads campaigns, but I don't use volume to track my Facebook Ads campaigns. I just track with the actual Facebook pixel. So none of my Facebook data is in here. But anyways, what I wanted to do in this video is just shoot six tips that you guys can start using today to help your Bing Ads campaigns and hopefully get you up to the 1K a day in revenue with Bing Ads and affiliate marketing. So the first tip is to find a high converting offer. And a couple ways to do this is to just one, oops, I haven't used this in a while, okay. Um, one way to do this is just ask. That's the simplest way. Your affiliate managers for whatever affiliate network you're a part of, they want you to do better. So the best way to find the high converting offers is just to pull your pull up your affiliate manager on Skype or email or whatever contact info you have. Just so be like, hey, X, whatever their name is, I'm running this traffic source. What are your current highest earning or EPC offers for this traffic source? And I would like a list of offers. And they'll get back to you because they have all that data and they want you to do better. So they'll be like, okay, here's uh, three offers that are doing really good for this traffic source. And then you can just go from that. Another way is to just spy and see what other people are running. And you can just uh, split test uh, offers too to see which ones are working. So asking is the most efficient way to find a high converting offer without putting in a lot of work. So you'll be one step, of the, one step ahead of the game if you just ask your affiliate manager. So number two, spy on affiliates. So with Bing ads, one way to spy is just manual. So you just pull up uh, bing.com or Yahoo and type in a related phrase for whatever offer you're promoting. And those top search results are gonna be the ones that are likely doing good because the ads at the very top of the search engine results page are the ones that are spending the most to be at that top position. So you gotta assume that they're doing really well. And then you can just click on their ad. I know it sucks, you're gonna cost them a few bucks, but hey, I mean, it is what it is. And just see what they're doing for their landing page or if they're direct linking, are they collecting emails, etc. So manual research is awesome. And another way to do this is just use AdSpy. Um, I've been starting to do this a little bit. I know AdSpy is a Facebook ad spy tool. So I have AdSpy pulled up and like, let's say you're promoting like a diabetes offer or something. You can just type in diabetes, add to filters in the ad text. And you just come down here and do, um, you could sort by likes. So what ads are getting the most likes? I wanna see those first. And then another thing you can do is just come here to networks and they'll have a whole bunch of uh, affiliate networks you can choose from to see if there's any ads on Facebook running for that specific network like A4Ds right here above all offers even though they're out of business. Um, I'll do any and I'm guessing there's going to be some ClickBank offers up here. Um, 
diabetes is not caused by eating I don't know what that is um, and then you just scroll through and see what other people are doing like what are they using for their ad creatives their ad text and then most importantly their uh, landing page so let's go check out this Facebook post okay I actually didn't want to see the Facebook post so, uh, if you click the I button you'll be able to go into uh, this where you can see the landing page too um, so the final URL Oh, it's a 404 so they probably stopped running this campaign um, that'll happen a lot uh, ad spy will show you results for campaigns that uh, have run their course and the advertiser uh, shut down the campaigns so we could do by uh, recent so we know that we'll be able to see a live landing page and then I'm gonna come up here and do United States so make it a little easier okay so now this one um, last seen on May 21st oh, that was a while ago well, let's see if this one's still got an active landing page. Well, that's the same one, isn't it? No. Page not found. Come on. Hopefully, there's one of them. Here. Okay, here's one that's live. A natural way to balance blood sugar. Look at that. Um, Got a nice little landing page and I like that call to action. It's just big, take me to the video. I'm guessing this is probably gonna be a ClickBank offer. Let's see. Yep, it's got the hop link right here and then the ClickBank logo down here. So this is a ClickBank offer. So you could just come and, oops. Oh, they also have a screenshot version of the landing page. So you just come, like even though they're running this on Facebook, you can come and take this landing page and don't just swipe the whole thing, obviously make some edits to it, but you can run this and test it out with Bing. You know, you don't have to just buy for your Bing ads campaigns on Bing. No, you can get ideas from Facebook or native ads, etc. So that's just thinking outside of the box a little bit. You could definitely, like this looks like a really neat landing page. So that's uh, one idea right there is just to use AdSpy. Um, I'll have a link in the description below to sign up for AdSpy with a special deal if you're interested in going that route. So manual spying on Bing and then just using any other spy tool for native or Facebook ads to find good landing pages like we just found in like two minutes. So number three, this goes off of spying. Once you find a landing page like this, you want to imitate it. Obviously you want to edit it a little bit because you can't just swipe the whole thing. That's kind of unethical. Um, make a few edits to this maybe you could find a different image a different headline or whatever just tweak it a little bit and then once you let me exit out of this and then once you imitate it a little bit then you just want to start doing some split tests so you're imitating so you'll have the v1 landing page will be something just like this you could like label it og and then your v2 split test could be og with new headline so instead of like a natural way to balance blood sugar you could do this is the best way to balance blood sugar doctors recommend this etc and just see which uh, headline performs better you always want to be split testing split testing is so important to do with affiliate marketing uh, there's one campaign that I'm running on Bing ads right now and I'm spending like 300 bucks a day on this campaign because I split tested so many like at one point I was split testing seven landers and all in all I've gone through 16 different variations I've narrowed it down to two high converting landing pages and like the earnings per visit on that landing page is like almost double what my v1 landing page was so it took me 16 tries to find a winning landing page and now I'm scaling it on Bing so split testing is huge. Um, number three, track your campaigns and optimize. This is so important. You have to have a really good relationship with your data. Your data is your baby. You gotta, you gotta be able to read data and make data informed decisions. So I use volume and click magic. Um, right now I'm just using volume for my Bing ads campaigns. And I put a couple screenshots in here just to go over some real life examples on what I mean by this. So tracking with volume, you can track what uh, networks are resulting in uh, the conversion. So right here is owned and operated. This is syndicated search partners. And this is uh, audience ads right there. That's the A. So there's three different networks. And as you can see, the highest earnings per visit is actually from syndicated search partners with $1.21. And the lowest is the audience ads. So that's low. And then you can go into your Bing ads uh, dashboard 
and go into the campaign settings and decrease your bid for audience ads by, let's say you might want to just decrease the bid by like 60% or something like that. Just make sure like you're, you have enough data to make these decisions. And obviously there's like 10,000 visits right here. So that's enough data to make that decision. That's plenty. And then owned and operated, that's uh, 95 cents. That's pretty good. But syndicated, I would increase the bid. And for the audience network, I would decrease that bid because it's only 25 cents. I got a few more examples here too. So another thing you can track is what device is doing good. So the best device for this campaign is M, which is mobile at 86 cents uh, per visit. Mobile and then computers right behind with 78 and then tablet is the least performing one with 63. So then this is what I would do, or I actually did. This was a live example. So for desktop, I increased by 5%. That was the second highest performer. Uh, tablet, I left it alone because it was uh, this campaign was still profitable with that earnings per visit. And then smartphone, because I was having such a high earnings per visit, I increased my bid by 10%. So anyone on mobile, uh, my, I'm going to increase my bid. So if my bid was originally a dollar for a certain keyword and someone's on mobile, my bid will be a dollar and 10 cents, which will bump me up in the average position. And then I can get more clicks, spend more money and make more money. So there's a really good example there. And lastly, another thing you can do with volume, which I love is uh, you can day part it or hour of the day part it. So you can see what hour of the day is working the best and most importantly, which ones are costing you money. So as you can see from here, it's looking like from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. is not that profitable, even though we got a couple sales at one. I could see that I was spending a decent amount of money, like these are a lot of visits for this time frame right here. And 7 a.m., I left that, let that be. That's a keeper, um, let's just do that. Oh, that's sloppy. <laughs> but I was getting a lot of clicks, you know, wasting a lot of my budget on clicks when it's five in the morning, six in the morning, four in the morning, three in the morning, two in the morning. So I started to think like, oh, maybe it's just people that can't fall asleep, super tired, and they're just trying to kill time or whatever. Just searching random stuff and my ads are appearing, they're clicking on it, and they're not in a good state to purchase. And that's probably why I'm getting so many zero conversions, but I'm still wasting money. So I'd come down here into my Bing Ads campaign, and then I'd do... I would set an ad schedule, and this is su it's, uh, super simple to do this in Bing. Monday, 12 a.m. to 6 a.m., decreased by 90%. And then from 6 a.m. to uh, midnight, I would just increase by 10. Uh, because Mondays were actually performing good too. And that's another thing you can do besides hour part is day part. And then the same thing for Tuesday, 12 a.m. to 6 a.m., decreased by 90. I don't want any impressions. I only got one now and zero now. So you guys get the point. That's how important it is to have this data and volume is so good at keeping track of all that stuff for you and making it easy to read the data too. So track your campaigns and optimize, super, super important. So number five, this is a new one that I've been testing out. Uh, try making SCAGs. So that stands for single keyword ad groups. And what this is, so let's say, I'm gonna go on that diabetes example again. So if you, are promoting a diabetes offer you can obviously like have a ad group that's got a whole bunch of broad broadly related terms all on broad match or you can do some manual research on Bing see what's being searched for the most and have those on phrase or exact there's a lot of different methods for ad groups but this is one that I've been trying and I've been having some success with so if I had a keyword like diabetes treatment was one that was working really good I could separate that and do a single keyword ad group and I would have diabetes, forgive my handwriting, this is really hard, diabetes treatment, I hope I spelled that right. So I would have that on there, and then that would be my broad match. And then I would have the same thing right here. I'm just gonna do that so you guys can drag it down. I would do a broad match modifier. Oh, actually, I would keep the diabetes part regular. And for treatment, I would have that broad match modifier on it. So like anything related to treatment with diabetes in it will result in my ad being shown. So that would be my second keyword. My third one would be diabetes treatment and I would have quotations around it. That would be phrase match. So if someone typed in, what is the best diabetes treatment? My ad would show. Um, and then next would be the fourth one, diabetes treatment. 
and then I'd have these brackets, that's exact match. So my ads will only show when the exact phrase diabetes treatment is typed in. So I'd have one ad group just with four of these keywords. And what I've noticed by doing these single keyword ad groups is that my quality score for that ad group is like nine times out of 10, it's a 10 out of 10 quality score. And the better the quality score, obviously the better positioning you're gonna get, the lower cost per click I've seen. And it's just uh, overall better to have a high quality score. That looks good in Bing's eyes and it'll help you with your campaign by getting lower cost per click and probably higher um, return on investment. So single keyword ad groups are something that I've been testing and it's been working. And if you guys haven't tried this out, I definitely recommend at least trying it. So that's number five. And then this is the last one and it's so important. I say this all the time. I know you guys are probably sick of hearing it, but test, test, test. You won't know if you have a winning campaign on Bing ads unless you test a whole bunch of campaigns. You gotta just grind it out and be able to, you gotta be okay with losing some money on the front end by testing and finding out which offers are bad and most importantly, which offers are good and then scale those. So testing is key. And that is it for this video. Those are six tips. I hope this helps you out if you guys are running Bing ads or even if you aren't, um, I'd highly recommend using this traffic source. A lot of people underestimate this traffic source because they think Google is where it's at and trust me, like obviously Google is a mammoth compared to Bing, but there is a lot of money to be made on Bing as well. So that is it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave me a thumbs up um, comment if you have any questions or concerns and lastly if you are not subscribed to my youtube channel smack that subscribe button and that notification bell to stay up to date with all my future videos and i will see you in the next one peace